Proverbs chapter 14, and I'm going to read one verse this morning. Verse 14, the Bible said, The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Christian, if you don't mind, won't you lead us in prayer? Well, help us, Holy Ghost. I pray, Father, Lord, that it's now time to stand where no man can stand alone. Need your help. Oh, my. God, anoint us. Manifest your presence. Oh, my. Give us liberty. Power. Oh, my. That's right. Yes. Breathe on us, God. Yes. Yeah. Well, what about that? Amen. Thank you, Christian. I want to preach to you with this thought in mind on beware of backsliding. On beware of backsliding. Now, I'm not preaching something to you this morning that I hadn't experienced my own self. I hate to say that. I'm not, I'm not happy to say that, Brother Rod. I'm not proud, Clint, to say that. Uh, but, it, but it's not a good feeling. It's not a good feeling when you uh, get away from God. I think about some people in the Bible well, of course, Judas is carried. We know that he was never saved to begin with. The Lord said he was a devil from the beginning. Uh, he never was a child of God. Uh, but I think about others in the Bible. I think about Peter, how Peter denied the Lord uh, three times. He'd seen walk with him, amen. Uh, he was a fisherman. He left everything that he had, Rod, and uh, followed the Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Doug. And left, I mean left it. He saw all the miracles uh, that the Lord done. But yet when it come down to it, when the rubber meet the road, Peter denied the Lord. He denied one of his disciples, one of his followers. And he, he denied the Lord. Then I thought about Odemus over there uh, in the New Testament, how Paul uh, spoke about Demas. And he said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of demises in the world. A lot of people that are a demons that were once in church and they once loved God and they once served God. They were on fire for the Lord. And boy, they couldn't wait until uh, the church doors opened. I mean, you know, just had that zeal and that spark about them. Uh, Brother Donald Trump, amen, for them to come to church. But you know what happened? They got their eyes on the world and the world got them out of the house of God and they backslid on the Lord. Yeah. Well, I thought about over our brother Doug in 3 John about old Diotrephes. Uh, some of the names in the Bible uh, we don't like to hear, but old Diotrephes, the Bible said, he loveth to have the preeminence. Yeah. Well, but backslid. I mean, it's not right with God and how some people are like that. Boy, they won't come to church, you know, not lest they're in charge or not lest they're teaching a Sunday school class, not lest they're preaching. Somebody say amen. You might as well say amen or oh me because you know I'm telling the truth. Uh, that's just the way the flesh is. Uh, you can spell the word self inside the word flesh, amen. And Diotrephes love to have the preeminence. Well, what is a backslider? Who is a backslider? A backslider is a careless disobedient, unhappy, ineffective Christian. That's who a backslider is. That's who he is. That's exactly right. They're truly born again, but they're out of touch with the Lord. Amen? Brother Phil, they're saved. Brother Doug, Brother Christian, they're saved, but they're out of touch with the Lord. You know what's happened? They've suffered, Brother Ray, a spiritual relapse. Have you ever been there, amen? I just want to say I'm guilty this morning. I'm, I'm probably preaching to myself. Listen, uh, who started, amen, how did that start in your heart to grow spiritually cold on God? I want to say this, 
If you're here this morning and you have ever experienced being backslidden, I'm going to tell you what, it's a miserable place to be. Amen. It's a miserable place to be. Hey, you're not enjoying the Lord. You can't be around other Christians who are praising God and enjoying their own salvation. Boy, you, I mean, you can't stand it when they say something about God. Hey, if they cut on a religious song or a good song, boy, you don't want to hear that because you're cold and you're not right with God. Amen, Brother Thad. Now, I'll tell you what. Hey, you're not enjoying the world. Brother Bob, you can't enjoy God's people and you can't enjoy the world. You know why? Because your heart is not right with God. Amen. That's right. Boy, it's a bad place to be. I mean, I, I hate to say that to you this morning, but I've been there and I've been there and amen, been there recently. It's just not a good place to be. Amen. A backslider in heart. Let me give you about three things this morning with the help of the Holy Ghost, and I pray this message will help us. Amen. If it'll help us this morning, it'll help you in the latter part of the week during revival. We'd love to stay up here uh, during revival. We plan on staying a few days. Doug asked us to stay, but my wife's got some uh, doctor's appointments. Amen. We've got to take care of the first of the week, but we certainly will be praying. Amen for the meeting. I want to say number one, you can write this down. As Christians... We're always faced with the danger and the possibility of backsliding. Right. Yes, sir. Amen. Don't ever say, don't ever be guilty of saying, I will never do this or I'll never do that. You'll be the very one that Satan will put a target on your back and you'll be the very one, amen, that the devil will get you down Amen. He'll make you think, Brother Bob, Brother Oak, nobody loves you, nobody cares. I've sat for days at my house and just sat in the room and sat in the recliner thing and just sat there for days and wondered if anybody loved me and wondered if anybody cared or, or anybody was praying for me or anybody had concern. Appreciate this, dear sister. Amen. Up front, I, I can't remember her name, but she'd send me cards through the mail. My wife said, who's in card? And I couldn't remember your name, but she'd send me cards through the mail. And said, preacher, we just want you to know we're praying for you and we love you. Amen. Brother Doug, I know this church has always loved us and, and been good to us. And, but you know, it felt like we was on an island of isolation and out in the middle of nowhere and, and you just feel like hey nobody cares amen that's right now I'm going to say this thank God it's not necessary that we should backslide <laughs> now God don't want you to backslide Israel was guilty of it Israel got the whoring after other gods amen hey they were guilty of, of backsliding on God you can find many instances and examples in the Bible uh, where people backslid on the Lord. But I'm glad Romans 8, 37 says that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm glad, amen, we don't have to be overcome, amen, being in a backslid condition. But I'm glad, thank God, we can be an overcomer. We don't have to be a succumber, but thank God we can be an overcomer, amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. Boy, that encourages my heart. Amen. How God will let us come back to him. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I want you to see this this morning. Amen. Beware of backsliding. 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. And look at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and they all uh, and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ but look at verse 5 but with many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness and these things were now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and they fell one day in three and twenty thousand 
Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. You can find that in Numbers 21. Now they, Moses put that serpent, amen, on a stick and lifted him up and said, Whosoever looks shall live, amen. He said in verse 12, Wherefore, or verse 11, Now all these things happen, uh, things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Well, I'm glad we got somebody cares. Amen. Doug taught this morning in Sunday school. I'm glad we've got a friend in Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 18, 24, the Bible said that a man that has friends must show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. Peter said, Brother Bob, in 1 Peter 5, 7, he said, casting all your care upon him, why? Because he cares for you. I'm glad when nobody else cares. Hey, I'm glad when family and friends have, you feel have walked away from you. Amen. When you feel like your best friend, Big Doug, has turned his back on you. I'm glad you've got a friend in Jesus. Thank God he can come up beside you and kiss you. Amen. He can come beside you, feel and give you a hug. He can come up beside you and speak to you in that still small voice. Woo! I'm glad we got a friend who cares. David said in Psalm 61, he said, Lord, when I'm overwhelmed, he said, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. I'm glad when you're overwhelmed. Hey, friend, you're not by yourself, Brother Ray. I'm glad Brother Clem we're not by herself. Hey, when you're overwhelmed, thank God we can go to that rock which was Christ, amen. And I'm glad that he loves us. And he said in Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yeah. Boy, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Boy, me and my wife just celebrated 40 years of marriage, and I'll tell you what, if it had been me, I wouldn't have stayed married to me. Somebody say amen. But I tell you what, she stuck with me through thick and thin. I mean the good times and the bad times, amen. And I'll tell you, there's been some dark days. I mean, friend, and we've faced some dark days sitting here together. But I'll tell you what, there's, there's been times I'm sure that she'd want to leave, amen, and, and take off and uh, flee. But you know what? She's always been there. Thank God for a good wife. Man that findeth a good wife findeth a good thing. What Solomon said, well, thank God for a wife. It, she knows that you're down and knows that, friend, things are not going good. That Brother Clint, that she'll tell you she loves you. And boy, she's long-suffering. She's just like the Lord. She'll put up with you. Somebody say amen. I couldn't make it by myself. I'm be honest to God. I thank God for my wife. Amen. I want to say this, friends. As Christians, we're always faced with a danger and possibility of backsliding. But the Lord give this warning to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Christian, he give us a warning. Amen. You don't have to backslide. But I want to tell you what, there's the possibility of you backsliding. Yeah. Let me give you this, number two this morning. I want to say this, that backsliding always begins in one place. Look in our text, amen. The backslider in what? In his heart. <clears throat> yeah. Backsliding don't start in your head, friend. Right. No. Right. Somebody help me here this morning. Right. Right. Well, I think about the prodigal son. Yeah. I tell you, the backsliding always starts in your heart. Yeah. Right. Well, that prodigal, he was sitting at home. Everything was good, Brother Doug. As long as everything was going fine, it was good. Boy, he was blessed. But you know what? He come to the place where he wanted to leave out of his father's house. And we're not going to turn there, but amen, in verse number 12, he said, give me all that falleth unto me. Yeah. Or the demanding, he was demanding. He said, boy, give me this, like it was a privilege that, uh, you know what I'm saying, we live in a day where people uh, think they're supposed to have this and have that, amen. He said, give me the portion of good. Amen. Well, there was the, friend, there was the demanding. And then I want to say this, there was a desolation. The Bible said he went into a far country. 
Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you, when you backslide, you know what you do? Yeah. You get off by yourself. Yeah. You get off out there in a far country. Yeah. Or you get off there and your phone don't ring, your preacher friends don't call. Hey, your family don't call. You don't feel Bob, Brother Doug, like nobody cares. Amen. Hey, you're off on an island by yourself. You're in a far country. Right. Hey, there's nothing wrong with them. The problem ain't with them. The problem's with you. It's in your heart. Backsliding always starts, Christian, in one place. It starts in the heart. That prodigal son was in desperation. He went into a far country. There could be some folks in here in these pews here this morning that, hey, you hadn't got out of church yet. But it might be that you're right there on the edge. You could be very close. Boy, you've been coming, but hey, there's a time, hey amen, I know, Brother Ray, I had to make myself go to church. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about, Jordan? Used to be a thrill, Brother Doug, to go to church and to come in church and see everybody and shake their hand. Hey, watch them smiling, hug their neck and tell them you love them. But I'm going to tell you what, there's been times I've set in my life, hey amen, that I've had to make myself, Brother Ray, go to the house of God. I'm just honest confession before you this morning. Desolation. And then I'll say this, that prodigal fell into it. He fell in a friend uh, to a thing of not only desolation, but he fell into a place of desperation. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. You know what happened? He said, I would have fain fill my belly with the husk that the swine did eat. One man said it like this, and boy, I like this right here. He said when he was at the father's house, he's eating high off the hog. Right. But when he went into a far country, he was eating with the hogs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's good. Well, ain't that amazing? Yeah. Right. Boy, we in your father's house. Christian, he was eating high off the hog. Woo! Yeah. Boy, I've been there before, boy, being church and loving it. Boy, I mean, couldn't wait. Brother Doug couldn't wait for revival to happen. Boy, be excited about it. Hey, man, I mean, couldn't wait. And then, boy, you get to the place where you're just so overwhelmed. And, hey, friend, it's not nobody else, Brother Bob. Brother Rod, it's not nobody else, but it's your own fault. Backsliding begins in the heart. And you get to the place that you're so cold that you don't even want to talk to nobody. Down there eating with the hogs in a far country. Amen. But I'm glad the story don't end there. I'm glad it's also, Big Doug, a place of rededication. You know what he said? The Bible said, Brother Bob, Brother Doug, the Bible said that he came to himself. Woo! I don't know about you, but I like that. They's cold chills running them down the back of my neck. You can hang a hat on. I'm glad, amen, that he came to himself. Hey man, you ever been there, friend? Boy, you get away from God and get a little cold on God. Maybe you get cold toward your pastor or your Sunday school teacher. Or, hey, you might even get cold toward your wife or your husband or your kids. Hey Amen. I'm glad, Brother Ray, the Bible said that he came to himself. Yeah. Boy, what a day that is, amen. But when you come to yourself and you realize, hey, it's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Yeah. And boy, he went back home, Brother Phil. He went back home. He backtracked. He said, you know what? He said, I believe I'm going to go back to my father. Yeah. And boy, when he went back there, brother, boy, I could see that old daddy, that old gray-haired daddy. Yeah. <laughs> boy, can you see it? That prodigal went back. And boy, there was that old daddy, that old gray-haired daddy, that he said, give me my goods. I'll tell you, when he got back, he didn't say, give me. You know what he said? He said, make me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, good. Woo! <laughs> God done broke his heart. Yeah. He done lost everything that he had. Amen. He done lost everything, Brother Doug, that he had. He said, but make me. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it don't matter what you do. I'm glad it don't matter how far away you drift from God. Yeah. How far away you see him that you get away from God. I'm glad all you got to do is just come to yourself. Yeah. Come to yourself and you go back home. 
Well, I walked in this morning, Brother Doug had a little Ella, and boy, he was lit up like a Christmas tree. Well, I know that feeling. Well, I can see Malin and Parker and Harper. I texted her this morning to pray for me because I was nervous, and she sent me a text back. She said, Pop, I'm going to pray for you. She said, I love you. Well, I want to go back to my father's house. Boy, at prodigal, he was making his way home. Let me just say this. Boy, the Holy Ghost gave me this. Doug, as I was on the way up here in the room, sitting in the room looking over this message, the Holy Ghost gave me this. The Father, Brother Thad, had already forgiven him. Somebody say amen. Well, the Father had already forgiven him. He was looking for him, amen. He said, is that my son? I think I see him coming back home. Boy, he's coming home. I believe that's him. Boy, I love him, amen. And he'd been longing to see him for a long time. And boy, he saw that boy coming back home. Boy, can you imagine that big Doug, how that would feel? But I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost, Christian, here's what the Holy Ghost, Brother Doug, told me. And here's where I had a hard part in my own heart. You got to forgive yourself. Well, the Father forgive him, but I'm going to tell you, friend, you got to come to the place where you forgive yourself. When you've been cold and indifferent, things has happened to you. And Paul said the things that happened unto him had fallen out for the furtherance to the gospel. You'll never have the joy of the Lord, and you'll never be able to front slide again. <laughs> Until you forgive yourself. Brother Rod, you got to forgive yourself. Ain't a person in here in here this morning that's perfect. They wasn't but one perfect and they crucified him. You got to come to the place where you forgive yourself. I didn't even feel worthy to come up here when you preacher asked me about coming. Doug, I didn't even feel worthy to come. I'm being honest. I'm just being just so honest with you from my heart. I didn't even feel worthy to come because you've, you've been a better friend to me than I've been to you. I've let you down. And I'm sorry for that. I, I, I beg you forgiveness. I'm sorry for that. I know you love me. First time I saw him, boy, God hooked us up. I didn't know him from Adam. And back then, I did have the joy of the Lord. And boy, God let me meet him. And I remember when y'all built all this up here, and Holly couldn't have no baby, and you put that prayer request, Christian, under the thing about Holly getting pregnant and having us a grandchild. And y'all prayed, Big Doug, and we got Harper. What well, I'm talking about, friends, beware of backsliding. Right. That prodigal had a rededication. Don't tell you, he also had a reunion. Yeah. You know what Father said? He said, don't you go get the best robe. You read it, it's in the book. Yeah. Right. Hey, don't give, me no, you, don't give me no warm blanket or some uh, unused coat or something like that, Brother Ray. Brother, Chris, uh, Brother Jordan, he said, give me the best robe. That speaks of relationship. He said, give me the best one. I want the best one, Clint, that you got. He said, give me the best robe. Whoo. Well, I'm glad God only wants the best for us, friend. He only wants the best for us. He said, give me the best robe. He said, listen. He said, bring a ring out and just put it on his finger. Well, it's part of his family. He said, this is my son. He said, even though he messed up, even though he went into a far country, even though he got away from God, he got away from his father. And I'll tell you what, hey, he forgave him and he accepted him back. He said, listen, don't go get the skinny calf. He said, but go get the fatted calf, amen. He said, this, my son was dead and he's alive. He said, listen, get the fatted calf. He said, we're going to have a spell around here. I don't know about you, but I like to eat. Now, I don't know about sushi. I don't know what that is, amen. 
But I sure like meatloaf and green beans and mac and cheese, amen. Hey, I sure like that kind of stuff. Somebody, I'm from the South. Somebody say amen. We was raised on beans and taters. Somebody say amen. I sure enjoy that. Don't say this. He was also a rival at home. He had an elder brother. One man said this, Brother Doug, I was reading after he said this. He said that was the prodigal son that never left home. They some people they'll get jealous. They'll get jealous, amen, if people get right with God. They'll get jealous, Brother Thad, if you get blessed, amen, your family gets blessed. Hey, how come that won't happen to me? Because you backslid. You don't have a broken heart, a contrite spirit. Boy, you don't have that broken heart that God can uh, take and break your heart and boy, you can just melt. Boy, I don't want to be hard-hearted. I've never been like that. I don't, Clint, I don't want to be hard-hearted, right? I don't want to be hard-hearted. God can't bless a hard-hearted person. Backsliding does not always, it don't always begin outwardly, but it begins inwardly. It is not an external thing to begin with. It's an internal thing. I'm not going to take the time, but you remember over in the book of Acts, chapter number 13, and then it bleeds on into chapter 15 where uh, Paul and Silas were together, and Paul and Barnabas were together, and they were going visiting the churches, and, and boy, they had John Mark with them, uh, and boy, John Mark decided, he said, well, he said, I believe I'm just going to go back home. I'm going back to Jerusalem. I think that's in chapter 15. You know what happened? Something happened, Doug, in his heart. There was something happened in that young man's heart. He said, I just don't want to go on these mission journeys. He said, I'm going to go back, go back home. I'm going back to Jerusalem. And then you read in Acts chapter 15, Barnabas, boy, he was a son of consolation. He was a son of encouragement. He was always trying to bring people together instead of divide people. He said, boy, I believe I'll take John Mark with me. Paul, boy, the Bible said the contention was so sharp between them. Yeah. There was contention. You know why? Because, listen, hey, they felt like John Mark had let them down. Paul felt like John Mark had let them down. But I'll tell you what, Barnabas being the comforter that he was, hey, he forgive him. Hey, friend, and they both uh, went on their separate ways. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Let me give you this. I want to say this to you, friend, about backsliding. Beware of backsliding. The outward evidence or, or the result of backsliding is always the same. In our text that I read to you, the Bible said the backslider in heart shall what? Be filled with what? His own way. Backsliding, Brother Doug, it's always the same. It's always the same. Brother Phil, when somebody backslides, they're, Brother Rod, they're always filled with their self. In the New Testament language, amen, you know what that means? That means walking after the flesh. Right. Romans chapter 8, verse number 1, the Bible said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Boy, when you backslide on God, Brother Ray, Brother Doug, when you backslide on God, it's all about you. It's your petty feelings. Well, why don't they do this? Or why don't they do that? Had somebody tell me one time, so I don't have many friends. I said, well, you're probably not a friendly person. Somebody say amen. The Bible says if you're going to have friends, you've got to be a friendly person. Is that right or not? If you're going to have friends, you've got to be a friend. Abraham Lincoln said, if you've got a friend and that person knows all about you from the beginning and the end, the good parts and the bad parts, hey, and they still love you, you've got a friend. <laughs> Amen. Well, a backslider is a Christian that's filled with himself. It's all about them. Oh, hey, look at me, look at me. Poor, pitiful me. Let me tell you something, friend. You're not the only one that's ever backslid. You're not the only one that's ever been through a hard time. 
You're not the only one, amen, that's been through valleys. Amen. We just lost our wife's stepfather, and he passed away. He's 82 years old. And I'll tell you, thank God he was saved. Him and Joyce's mother was married for 43 years. But I'm glad he was born again. Thank God he's absent from the body and present with the Lord. I want to say this to you, friend. A backslider is a Christian who's filled with himself. I want to say his state is insecure. It is important to understand the difference between our state, amen, and our standing. Once you get saved, you'll always be a child of God, Clint. I'm glad you can't lose your salvation. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, if it had been up to me, Christian, I'm going to tell you what. Hey, I've turned my back on God and walked away from him. I don't know why he still loves me, Big Doug, but I'm glad he does. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said that's enough to make a Methodist shout. Somebody say amen. amen. If I could run, I'd run all over this church. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Amen. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's 25 words in that verse. There's 12 words before the Son and there's 12 words after the Son. Right in the middle of that verse, you'll find the Son. And if you don't want to be backslid, that should be where you ought to be in your life, right in the middle of your heart in your life. A backslider, he states, insecure. In other words, he's still a Christian, but he has no sense of security or assurance. They're always wondering and doubting. You ever seen any of them old doubting Thomas? John chapter 20, amen. Boy, when the Lord walked in, amen, the first time the Lord walked into that upper room, met with them disciples, Thomas wasn't there. He was a disciple, but because he wasn't there, he was a doubter. Eight days later, the Bible said Jesus showed up again. No, Thomas, he was doubting, amen, doubting all them other disciples. But I want to tell you what, hey, when he walked in the next time and he saw the Lord, amen, Brother Thad, and he seen them wounds in his hands, amen, in his side and in his feet, he wouldn't doubt no more, amen. He received them wounds in the hands of his friends, amen. He said, oh, Lord, my God, I'm glad, thank God, you can believe in Jesus, amen. Count me in, I believe him. Amen, John 2, 5, whatsoever he saith, then you do it, amen. I want to tell you, a backslider, a friend, is a person that his profession is insincere. You say, what do you mean by that? Hey, because the inward condition is wrong, amen, his outward profession is insincere. Nobody really takes a backslider seriously. You look at somebody's backslid, and you know what? One man said this, and I'm about through. One man said this, there's a lot of people that's going to hell because of a few people that's going to heaven. Somebody say amen or oh me. Oh, we're not living right, and we're quick to snap off at somebody, and we got a problem with anger or jealousy. Amen. People know who you are. Well, your family know who you are. And if you, the people you work with, I guarantee they know who you are. You spend more time with people you work with than you do with your family. They know who you are. We can act one way on Sunday and another way you do it Monday through Thursday. Profession is insecure. Amen. Matter of fact, Jesus said this. If I can find this verse right quick over here, Matthew chapter 15, verse number 8. He's talking about the Pharisees. He said, This people draweth nigh to me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right. Being a backslider. Amen. How insincere, insincere can that be? Still going to church, still teaching a Sunday school class, still being a deacon. Amen. Yeah. Amen. One man said, If your heart is not in it, God's not going to be in it either. They don't say this, a backslider, his life is inconsistent. He's just like a yo-yo, always up and down. He'll come one Sunday and then be out and you won't see him for another three weeks. Yeah, I pastored long enough, friend. Amen, I didn't come in on the last load of pumpkins. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I love people, Brother Doug. I mean, I love them. I do, I love people, but you better not put your confidence in people. 
Amen. Some of, the, some of the greatest friends I thought I had at church. Preacher, we love you and we'll be there with you. And boy, we'll stand behind you and they're so far behind me now I can't even see them. I've been, been let down. You ever been let down? Your life is inconsistent when you backslid. Amen. Your creed's not lining up with your conduct. Amen. Every backslider is living an inconsistent life. Don't need to look at nobody else. I'm going to tell you, and thank you, Holy Ghost, this message may cause, cause us to have revival this week. If you're here this morning and you're backslid and your old heart's been cold, amen, your heart's been cold. I mean, the choir got up to sing and boy, I mean, listen, it touched my heart. Tammy and Thad, it touched my heart, amen, to just, just, to, just to feel the Holy Ghost. He said in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be in the midst. It don't take a crowd for God to show up. Boy, I felt the power of God, Christian, the presence of God, I tell you, I don't want my life to be inconsistent. Amen. Amen. And then I'll give you this, and we'll be through on to say this. A backslider service is ineffective. How can your service be effective, amen, when your heart's not right with God? Yeah. Right. Amen. amen. Yeah. Matthew 6, 24, he said, No man can serve two masters. Right. You'll either serve God or mammon. Right after that, he said in verse number 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these other things shall be added unto you. When you get backslid, you know what you do, amen? You start putting everything else before the Lord. Well, we can't make it to Sunday school. I believe we'll just go for preaching. Sunday night used to be important to you. Well, boy, I don't like Sunday night service. Why does our church have Sunday night service? Because of Hebrews 10, 25. The Bible says when your church assembles together, you ought to be there. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Amen. Listen, friend. If we do, if we're conscious of having been backsliding, you know the best thing to do for cold and indifferent is to just get it right with God. Just make it right with the Lord. Somebody said this about 1 John 1 9. He called it 911. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. All you got to do is call 911, Clint. 1 John 1 9. That's 911. He said, if we confess our sins, He is what? He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's had this I ain't only preached to myself this morning God's had this for somebody else I don't know who you are I don't know where you're at in your Christian life but y'all, y'all about to get ready to go into revival I don't know the la- the, probably the last time I've seen revival has been up here remember Doug when y'all had that meeting boy I mean God was just moving I mean moving all over the place God put this message on my heart and the devil said don't preach that John 8, 44, the devil's a liar. I said, Lord, that's all I got on my heart. I'm going to preach it. Amen. Let me give you these verses. And you can look at these verses if you want to. Isaiah 55 and 6 and 7. Isaiah 55, verse 6 and verse 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. While love, verse 7, let the wicked... Forsake his way. And he's talking about Brother Big Doug Erds the sinner. Let the wicked forsake his way. Let him get saved. But also, he didn't leave us out. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. Amen. Let the backslider. Let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God. And he will abundantly pardon. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.